Okay, welcome to the Crow Discovery Project. I wanted to make a clip to kind of give people some tips on how to shoot the lunar wave and things that are important about the lunar wave filming. Also, I apologize for the birds screaming in some of this footage. They rescue animals next door, so it is what it is. Um, also, I will close out with a bit of a nature clip at the end of this. So here we go, and I will start with setting up my rig. And that'll come right about here. All right, so I am all set up. And I don't know if you can see, there it is. The moon's in just a beautiful phase to try to catch stuff tonight. I've had reports from Coventry, England, that two black triangles went across the moon. As you can see, I've got my visual spectrum, what our eye sees, with a telephoto and a doubler on top. I have my full spectrum rig on the back. And uh, I'm all set up here. But here's the problem. There's the moon. And look at that. That is chem debris. They're chemming out on the coast and out over the ocean. But they do it. So this right here is the path of the sun where I'm showing you. So that finger of this junk is reaching in. Look. Clear sky. And then here's all the way north. Clear sky. And if I come over here and point west to the beach, there's the sun going down. You can see um, there is uh, a chem wall out there. This is not natural clouds. But as I pan around, look at that. And this is what's been going on. And so I drag my stuff out, I set up, I get ready to do what I do, and, uh, and then it just clears, you know, it completely covers over. So um, here's to tonight, and maybe I'll get lucky and uh, catch something. He's right here. So this night a strange thing happened. We do this all the time, and this is the first time I ever noticed this on the monitor. Each electronic device kind of interprets the signal, and you see this kind of green ring around the moon. So um, I moved things around and filmed it to ensure that it was associated with the moon, and it was unusual because we've never seen this before. I couldn't see it on the back of the camera, um, although I do have the monitor set in a certain way to help me view things. We've never seen this before, funny thing was is that the chemtrails that I showed you earlier that were peeking in closed the sky about 15 minutes later and they closed all at once. So I think what we're filming here is just kind of the little particulate debris that I cannot yet see visually because it's dark and the moon is so bright. But the monitor could pick it up and it really goes to show that paying attention to you know everything you're doing and considering what a monitor shows you versus what the camera LCD shows you um, even the final encoded clip. Here you can see I'm taking it off frame to ensure what I'm seeing is associated with the moon itself. Um, very unusual thing. We haven't seen it before. We haven't seen it since. Uh, but I think what it was doing was picking up the particulate matter of the chem drilling that would close the sky a few minutes later. Anyhow, uh, here comes the how to film the wave tutorial. Let's jump into that. All right, so we're going to do a little tutorial on things that you should know to film the lunar wave. And this example will be with a DSLR camera. Um, it could be a DSLR with just a lens or a telephoto, or it could be a DSLR that's going to go on a telescope. So I'll start by showing uh, what you need to go on to a telescope. This is called a T-ring by telescope shops. I think camera shops call it a camera adapter. But this T-ring, this part of it goes to the scope, and then whatever, this is for a Canon, this ring is for a Nikon, uh, you screw that on to the 2-inch cell. So what happens is I would remove that, that would go to the camera, and then this would couple the camera to the scope. Um, if you have some kind of a different camera that is not a DSLR, call Oceanside Telescope. They have a 1-800 number. They're called OPT um, and they can hook almost any camera. By the way, I'm sorry about the birds. Um, they rescue animals next door and the trash trucks piss those birds off to no end. Anyhow, when you're shooting with a DSLR, the average person will be viewing the lunar wave in this window and it's very difficult to do. It's not that expensive to get an HDMI cord. Now this is not the cord that dumps the the uh, images back to your camera. There's a slot there, there's HDMI out, 
And so this goes into the camera and that would go into your HDMI monitor. You can go to Walmart and get very cheap HD TVs now. So this is the monitor that I use. And this is the HDMI right here. So you just simply tether the camera into there and you get an image that is that big, which helps a heck of a lot and makes the job much, much easier. All right, so to stress, the HDMI cables, here's one for Nikon, one for Canon, because I have two different kinds. This is not the cable you use to dump images onto your computer. It's called an HDMI tether. Okay, so my other clip got cut off, and I wanted to point out, if you have a DSLR, and you're going to be looking at the wave in a small LCD window, this one's about three and a half inches, if you get what's called a loop, this thing, it changes everything. It makes your focus ability much easier. Um, it allows you to look through that while you're shooting if you're on a tripod. Uh, a lot of cameras will not let you use this viewfinder while you're shooting video and require you to use this. The problem is, is you can't see a damn thing because of the glare. It's almost impossible to focus, so 80 bucks or less for one of these loops uh, is a big deal. If you're going to really start doing this, you'll probably want one. So, filming the lunar wave. When you're filming the lunar wave, you do not want to zoom on the moon. You want to have as much of the moon in frame as you can, and you do not want to zoom to the point where the edges are cut off the moon. Um, frame rate. Some cameras allow you to run a high frame rate, but it reduces your, your, you know, your video size. It is more important to run at 24 or 30 frames a second and get a larger video than it is to run at 60 frames a second. Focus and quality are everything. When you're setting up on the moon, just take some stills to test your focus. If you don't have this loop to help you out, just do it the regular way, but take stills to be sure that you've got quality focus. So if you do catch something, let the, ca the camera run for about 30 seconds after you see a wave or an event. The reason for this is, is a lot of times in the past I cut the camera off too quick and I missed things or only got partial things trying to fire it back up. So those are the basic overall things I can tell you about filming the lunar wave. Uh, let me look at my... Oh, there is another critical thing. If you film the lunar wave, make absolutely sure you know what time it is down to the second if you can. One way to do this is to make sure your camera is set up with the proper time. The other way to do this is when you see it, just simply look. If your camera is improperly set up and you go back to look at the, t the file time, uh, it won't help you because the wrong time will be in that file. I will be here to help vet any wave captures. If we think you capture a wave, uh, you can post or send me the file and I will try to help you vet it to authenticate it as an actual lunar wave. So there it is. Um, that's what I can tell you to help out. Um, and if you have a telescope that does not have a two inch rear cell or a two inch hookup, call Oceanside Telescope. Um, one 800 number there. You can look them up online and uh, they can hook almost any camera type to any scope. Uh, these days they can do quite a bit and they're experts. It's a camera and telescope shop in one so they know what they're talking about. So there it is. Cheers. Okay, to do a quick recap on the things that I talked about. Um, quality matters. Um, everyone has kind of a different camera, different setup, different ability but you should be aiming for the best quality that whatever you're using can give you. Focus is critical. Uh, I mean, we look at so much NASA junk where it's out of focus and it's just, it's laughable. Um, what you do is if you have a loop like I showed you, you can get your focus that way, or you can simply take stills just to test focus. That's probably the most common way to do it. Large video size is more important than frame rate. A lot of people want to shoot at 60 frames per second, but with most camera, that reduces the physical size of your frame. You want to get at least 1080 or 1920 by 1080 if your camera allows that. Some will, some will only allow 720 in HD. A frame rate of 24 to 30 frames per second is more than enough to do this. If you're shooting without a telescope, you must use a tripod, otherwise your video will be useless. Um, get the best results your system allows. If you shoot something and you're not sure that you've got something, save the clip 
if you're watching what's going on, a good way to save space is dump the clips if you know you haven't caught anything. Paramount importance is get the time of the lunar waves. We're going to need to know what time, if this happens, we will need to know what time zone you're in and what time, down to the second, if possible. If you set up your camera properly, the file will tell you this. If not, you need to somehow know the time when you do it. I can't stress enough how important it is to tell the truth. So many people want to explain the lunar wave away. Um, they want it to be planes, which I have pretty much demonstrated is not really possible here. But if you film a plane, show the plane. Say I saw a plane. If you see something else, just tell the truth. Be honest in what you do, and the result of that will be worth its weight. Um, lastly, I will be here to help vet any footage. If you think you capture it, contact me and we'll go from there. And now we're going to close out with uh, a little bit of a interesting thing that I shot the other day. And then I will close with the with the 10,000 mile road trip. So we have a, a brand new butterfly. Um, he just hatched this morning. We've been watching his little chrysalis for a number of days. Um, there's the fluid that came out as he opened up and made the transformation. You know, it's an amazing thing. It's like all other things in life when you take the time to really closely observe. You come away with a whole different view. Now, this caterpillar came from that. There's a passiflora vine on that tree. It has purple flowers. Um, it's late because of the overcast skies that we've had for so long, but it has just a plethora of caterpillars and they cruise all the way down and they always come over here somewhere on our table, chairs, whatever, and they make their little chrysalises. But it really makes you wonder when you consider what we see in the system of control, how people are clearly, purposely being retarded uh, when I watch this, I marvel at what the possibilities of a human being may be that are purpose, you know, purposefully being, you know, crushed, held back. But it's an amazing thing. He's going to have a tough time today because the sun's not out. He'll probably make it, but he's been out of his chrysalis quite a while. He's not pumping his wings yet. Um, normally when the sun's out this happens much quicker I'm sure he'll be okay but they have a much easier time when the sun's out all right there's enough of the nature moment and in closing uh, I am really zeroing in on uh, at least 10 places that I've ID'd where I'll be doing some things um, I will hold the PayPal link open for road trip funding for a while longer and thanks to all those who have contributed um, it should be a heck of a thing to get out and film and just see what is out there to be seen and do the typical type of filming I do now with additional tests and uh, some other things that I won't talk about. So there it is. Cheers.